important thing you will need to do is dis discover whether your operation is going to be profitable enough to, to be worthwhile to continue. And you need to approximate how profitable the operation will be. So the scope of what I'm about to present is not specific to chemical engineering. It is actually global in scope and you can use it anywhere. Whenever you have any personal finances where you have expenses and in, uh, in investments and income coming in, or if you have your own business, anything like that, this will hold true. And so simply speaking, the profit that you'll make say per year, will be equal to whatever money, whatever income you made, whatever revenue you made, and you subtract any expenses that you had, any taxes that you had to pay, and any investments that you had to uh, you had to invest in. And again, this is true for personal finances as well. So your income would be your yearly salary or something like that. Expenses would be things like, well, you know, you had to pay for electricity and, and internet and hot water and things like that. Uh, taxes is whatever taxes you paid on your income. Uh, your property taxes, maybe, uh, anything like that. And an investment, maybe you invested some money in in, um, uh, in the stock exchange or you bought a, a piece of property or something like that. Um, those are the things that typically in personal finances will hold true. In a chemical plant, this will be a little bit different, uh, but, but it's the same sort of definition. The income of the plant will be whatever the plant sold for the year in, in, for the product, Expenses will be, well, simply put, M and O, so the maintenance-related operations and the labor-related operations. You can just add them up, and that's going to be your expenses about, you know, the salaries that you paid the workers and things like that. Uh, the investments will be anything that, that the company invested in. So maybe they invested in a new piece of equipment to make things work more smoothly. Maybe they uh, they had an, ad a, an addendum to the, to the chemical plant, or maybe they just made the company, they built the chemical plant from scratch. And then taxes, uh, just like for personal finances, that's whatever the government levied on the income or on the revenues that, the, that came in for the year, okay? For corporate taxes, this is not true for personal finances, but it's true for corporate taxes. Uh, we, we have a, a, uh, an overall 21% taxable uh, uh, rate for corporate for corporate operations. And basically the way you, you calculate that is you take whatever the revenues are for the for the company and you subtract expenses, depreciation, deductions, and you multiply that by 21%. Now, why do you do that? Because whatever taxes that you're paying uh, will not be directly on the revenues. You always subtract something out. So you might think, oh, you know, if I made $100,000 a year and I had a 20% income tax uh, for the government or something like that, you know, for your own personal finances, then obviously I have to pay $20,000 to the government. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true even for you because maybe you had some uh, eligible expenses or maybe you had some uh, any deductions. Maybe you had uh, a child that went to school or a disabled uh, relative that you lived with or things like that. Those things will be used to assess your income and actually subtract from it so that the taxes that you're paying will be less than what you'd expect. It will be less than that 80, 80, uh, 20,000 I, uh, I just threw out you. So if, you had, if it was 20% tax, uh, tax rate at $100,000 a year, you will likely not pay $20,000 to the government. There'll be a lot of ways to reduce that. Uh, and the way you reduce that is really not an illegal way. It's it's totally legal, it's totally legitimate, and it's totally encouraged. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone knows all the ways to reduce that amount, and some people overpay, and some people underpay. Uh, and when they underpay, that is illegal. Okay, so going back to corporate finances, it is a blanket 21% uh, factor, and you just uh, multiply by this, the way that we subtract out of your revenues. And I will discuss uh, what this means in a minute. Uh, specifically, we'll dis discuss depreciation. We won't discuss deductions so much, corporate deductions in this course, but we will discuss what depreciation means in a minute. Okay. Uh, so the depreciation is a type of deduction that we're going to use to lower our taxable income. So since any investment will lose value over time, uh, we're going to use this to our advantage. So and as an example, let's say you buy a piece of equipment that's worth $100,000 and you know that if you took it apart for scraps at the moment, new, brand new, its pieces will total 
about $20,000. So that means that even though you're going to own this piece of equipment over a long period of time, at the end of the day, when this thing, when this piece, when this piece of equipment becomes well, a piece of garbage, you can just sell whatever is left over for twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so we're gonna say that we're going to depreciate the the one hundred thousand dollars worth of the equipment to twenty thousand dollars. Okay, it is not a real thing. It is something that we came up with for accounting convenience because it is. Technically, a way to say, well, my piece of equipment lost value and I can't use it for uh, for the same for for the same re for the same usefulness that I had it for because it was uh, it lost value over time over wear and tear from overuse and things like that. So over time, uh, since it lost the value, I should be able to get some tax break from it. Okay, uh, and uh, it's important to stress that depreciation is again an in an accounting convenience to lower the taxable income and a company may, may or may not choose to reduce its profit by D to have less taxes taken out whenever it is possible to be done, okay? I'll also note that uh, depreciation is usually done for uh, real estate, for pieces of equipment, for currency, but never ever for land, okay? Land does not depreciate in value, uh, okay? So let's talk about two depreciation schemes. I'm showing you two depreciation schemes that are possible. Uh, there are more, uh, but I will just show you two common ones that are used by, uh, by accountants. And again, I don't think you will necessarily have to do this uh, yourselves, but I'm giving you the tools so you can speak to accountants and be able to speak their language and maybe be able to uh, to maybe if you want to start your own business, you can kind of start um, understanding people who are dealing with this stuff or a, a window towards a, uh, an economic uh, uh, mind frame. All right, so let's look at two specific schemes. The straight line depreciation, which will be a constant factor, or a sum of years depreciation. And so basically what you're going to do is the, the depreciation value that you're going to subtract out of your income will be equal to some sort of factor, which will be either this or this, or maybe you have another scheme, times the initial cost of the piece of equipment minus the salvageable cost. So uh, if, for example, we'll go back to that example where you bought $100,000 worth of a piece of equipment, say, and after a few years, you say it's now broken, I can't use it, but I can still sell its parts for $20,000. That means that the salvageability for it is $20,000 and that the initial cost was $100,000 and you can just subtract the two and you'll get 80, okay? And that's what we're actually gonna use in an example in a second. Uh, for the straight line depreciation, it will be a constant, uh, constant factor and for the sum of years, it will actually index. So let's look at an example and see how this works. If let's say you have a 10-year uh, a period for a piece of equipment, so you determine that this piece of equipment can only operate for 10 years, okay, you, you estimate that, and that it costs you $100,000, but it has a salvageable cost of $20,000. And you want to know how you can take depreciation out of your uh, income and understand basically your net profitability from this. Okay, so let's, let's review. To get depreciation, it's just this factor that we have one of these two factors, times the cost minus the salvageability. And if you look at the problem statement here, the cost is $100,000, the salvageability is $20,000, and the lifetime is 10 years. You just estimate it to be 10 years. So I can use this and directly uh, substitute that into the relations I have here and determine uh, the, the, the factors that I need. Okay, so I will have a table that will be a, a, a 10 year pay, uh, for the 10 years. And let's start plugging things in. So for this, for the D factor, as, I, as you have here, I'm gonna do cost minus salvageability, 100,000 minus 20,000, it'll be just the factor times 80,000. For the straight line, it'll be one over lifetime, which would be one over 10. And for, this, the, the, for the sum of years, the, I'll leave the lifetime left as an index and I'll just, I'll just substitute in 10 and 11 and two, and I'll get that it's lifetime left over 55. And so let's see how this works. For year zero, uh, for, the, for the straight line, I'll just 
take one over 10 and I'll multiply by 80,000. So I can reduce my salary or my income by $8,000 according to the scheme, okay? For, uh, for the sum of years, my indexing will be a little different because lifetime left at this point is 10, right? Because I have a 10 year period and it's gonna be over 55 times the 80,000 that is, that is from here. And I get $14,000, 545 cents, okay? For year one, you'll see the straight line is exactly the same. It doesn't change. And for, uh, for this, it will be nine now instead of 10 because my lifetime left will be uh, subtracted by a year and I get that it's uh, you know, about $13,000. And I can go on and so on and so forth. And for year two, it'll still be $8,000 for this. Now it'll be a little bit less for the sum of years. And as you can see for the straight line, it's $8,000 throughout the 10 year uh, operation. And the sum of years, it is subtracted. Uh, and it starts high and it goes low. And you can see it may be nice for you to subtract a larger sum in the beginning because you will pay less taxes on, for year one. And for year two, you'll pay less taxes. And for year three, you'll pay less taxes than you would for, for year nine and 10. So uh, it's typically done, say, for example, if you're, not, you're gonna be more vulnerable in the beginning because you have to invest in so many different things, you don't have as much cash on hand to pay for things. So maybe this is nice and convenient for you right now to show this. Uh, to lower your taxes, so you can you can go ahead and uh, and 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 have more cash uh, cash on hand, and then later on when you can afford it, you can pay it back. Okay, so you you're still gonna pay it back because at the end of the day, when you sum this all up, it's gonna be exactly the same as here. You're not you're not you're not really cheating anything. You're just basically moving things and shuffling things around. Okay, why would you choose this this the the simple way over the complicated way? Well, uh, here you can actually show on the books that you're making more money. You can go and you can show other investors, hey, look, uh, I'm, this is my taxable income. I'm making quite a bit of money. Whereas here you're subtracting some, your taxable income looks a little bit less, the net cash you have looks a little bit less. So it's not as attractive for other investors. You, you'll say, oh, you know, they're losing more money here or whatever. So it just depends on whatever, uh, Whatever, whatever you're trying to get at, whatever your personal goals are, whatever the corporate goals are, and you follow through with that. There are other schemes like I mentioned, uh, and we were not gonna cover them here, but there are some, some other ones uh, that are interesting, but these are some of the co most common ones that I, that I have found.